I'm Matt Hullum, and this is Sin. Hello everyone, this is Scott from Sin Media and I'm here today with Matt Hullum, the CEO of Rooster Teeth. Hey everybody, Matt Hullum from Rooster Teeth, glad to be here. Uh, so I do get a present for you. Uh, you did? I did, so uh, I thought it might be appropriate that you sort of... Whoa, excellent. I've, I've had Rooster Teeth, but I've never had candy teeth. It's um, it's it's going to be like a nice experience. You know, snack, you've got a couple of hours left. Um, I feel like you could use it. I definitely could. You know, you need a little sugar boost this time of the day. Uh, walking around the convention floor all day and meeting people and saying hello. And, uh, and then now I'm going to be chomping on teeth instead of teeth chomping on me, which is a good thing. Um, so how have you found sort of like fans sort of like running at you and, um, and sort of like shouting out your name? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's great here because it's a, with a different accent. So I'm not even, sometimes I don't recognize my name. But no, it's really cool. You know, I mean, we love coming to Australia and uh, it was kind of a fight over who was going to get to be able to come down from the company. And so we just took everybody. I think we have like 100 people here. Uh, I looked out in the audience today and I was like, yeah, those are employees. It's crazy. You know, it's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool. And so uh, my, my big question is, so Bruce used to be just the company that did Redbus Blue. Right. Uh, so you could identify it as like, oh, it's a Redbus Blue company. But right. since you now do more so things, I've got yeah. You've got your, your gaming stuff, you've got your live podcast, you've got your Let's Plays. Yeah. How would you describe Rooster to someone who doesn't know Rooster Teeth? The most important global entertainment company ever in history. And ongoing? And into the future. The first company to control the moon and all of its media. That is our, that's our goal. We're going to destroy the moon. But not before we play our podcast. You gotta make sure that you have, like, you've pissed on it before you can use exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> We're gonna ruin it, and so nobody else is gonna want it after that. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I, you know, I think what we are doing has always defied uh, boundaries and definitions a little bit, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, so we're just excited about continuing to do that, and we love that we're able to reach an entire global audience at once, and that it, what we're doing is not just reaching fans in the U.S but you know, in Australia, New Zealand, and around the world. So it's, it's really exciting to be here. So like that moves on to my next question, which is like, how did RTX happen? And now what are you feeling now? It's obviously you've, you're running an RTX in a different country. Right. Well, I mean, to those of you who, who don't know, we've been doing RTX for uh, about six years, you know, in the United States and have been wanting to expand. We have a lot of fans who come from around the world uh, and a lot of fans who just, you know, simply couldn't get here, couldn't, couldn't get to the U.S., couldn't get to Texas uh, for RTX, and we're really demanding it. And on Australia has always been uh, just such a big uh, center, such a big fan base for us that when we started talking about expanding and doing RTX in other locations, I think it was pretty like, I don't know, just a pretty obvious decision for us that that Australia needed to be the first place that we did it. And um, uh, luckily, we have a, a pretty good setup down here with uh, Hannah B, who is our distributor in Australia, and uh, with Supernova, we worked with them a ton. And so the three of us, you know, those three groups, were able to come together and put on this presentation. And we're su super excited about it because, I mean, you look around the show four this year, and it does not look like a first year convention, you know? This is like, I mean, I think this is a bigger uh, presentation than we had at the third year in the U.S. You know, which is just goes to show like how incredible Aussies are and coming out and, and, and just making this happen, you know? So we're really looking forward to, to growing it and expanding it and uh, doing more here in the future because we just, uh, we love it here and, and the um, Australian community has been so good to us over the years. Um, so I have, you just released uh, a movie, which obviously the premiere, yeah. it's got coming out the 27th, but how have you sort of felt that you've, you've not only just started a movie, but it's yeah. finished and now you've seen it in a cinema? 
it's pretty awesome, you know, and the reason that we were down in Australia, it worked out. We didn't know what the timing was going to be, uh, but we did this Indiegogo campaign for the movie, and Australia was the country outside of the U.S. that donated the most uh, to the campaign at the, at the, the you know, highest dollar value for the backers. And so we promised, you know, whoever that, which country that was, we would do a special premiere in that country. And so we were very excited to be able to do it here. Had a great premiere screening, um, packed house, lots of people, red carpet, the whole nine yards uh, here on George Street at a huge event center. The theaters here are like way nicer than they are in the U.S., by the way. They're really great here. Um, and so that was a really special experience. And, um, you know, uh, the movie will be out in theaters uh, nationwide in the U.S. and nationwide in Australia very soon. And I know there's a, a couple big screenings lined up here. I think actually the biggest screening in the entire world is going to be in Sydney. Uh, I think at the same theater on George Street, uh, uh, Event Cinemas, and Bernie will be uh, attending that. Um, you know, just to have fun and say hello to all the fans. And I want to say it's like, like close to a thousand people. Are gonna be there. So you have mentioned that you, you've got the movie going on, you've got Ruby, which is obviously the sort of American anime that you guys right. have going on, you've got the streams, right. you've got Funhouse, which has now arrived, which is another podcast to add to your multiple other podcasts. Right. That's been done in 12 years. What happens in the next 12 years? Well, like I said, we're going to blow up the moon. I think that's the first thing. Uh, you know, we would love to make more movies. I would love to make an animated movie. Uh, we have some that we you know, have um, sketched out that we'd like to do. Uh, the biggest thing for us in the immediate future, in 2016, we, we premiered actually here at RTX Australia a couple of our new uh, premium series that we're doing. One is called Day Five. That's a series that um, uh, Bernie and Joel and I have been working on uh, for quite some time, and uh, it is a it's a uh, it's about a world. It's a uh, kind of apocalyptic tale where one night in the middle of the night, uh, everyone who's asleep dies, and then everyone who goes to sleep after that point dies, and we pick up on Day Five. That's what's called. Pick them on day five with the survivors who are trying to stay awake and trying to figure out what is the story, what is the deal with this apocalypse. And it's our first uh, serious uh, dramatic piece, and it's an hour long series. It'll be in richteeth.com, middle of this year. We're super excited about that. And we also announced a couple of comedy series that we're doing, Kleptos, a series called Crunch Time that we're really proud of, that uh, is kind of like, a, it's kind of like a workaholics meets weird science, you know? For lack of a, a, a better term, but it's a it's, it's very true to the Rooster Teeth aesthetic. It's a comedy with some suspense in it uh, about some guys who have access to technology they should not have access to, and all the things that kind of like unfold um, from that. So I don't want to give too much away about that. But it's going to be a very exciting, very fun series, and that'll be out later this year as well. Um, so you have all this stuff going on, and when you sort of stepped into your role, you sort of moved away from the spotlight and sort of behind the scenes and working and directing and obviously being the CEO. Is there anything you would have liked to sort of become a show of where you're sort of showing your face a bit more? Is there any like, what project would you like to join? Like, are you actually secretly just a massive fan of Let's Plays, but you've been hiding your face? I do, I mean, I do love everything that comes out of Achievement Hunter. And um, I love the podcast. I get to be on the podcast, I don't know, once every blue moon. Uh, you know, I would love to be on Ruby. They keep turning me down for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe I should just fire the whole crew and start over. No, no? I feel like you just need to assert yourself as boss. Uh, maybe I do. I'm giving them too much creative freedom. Well, maybe you sound too serious. They're moving to a serious tone. Maybe like this is where you thrive. I know, things are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit real with Ruby the last couple episodes. So uh, maybe it's time for me to step in and uh, really drop the gun. Maybe you're just like the secret boss that's been running the entire thing. That's the right. Time. Under, undercover boss. That's right. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually Ruby. I've been playing the Ruby the whole time. It's a big ruse that Lindsay and I have been worked out together. Um, just one last question. Yeah. Um, so obviously you're part of the original crew and you had uh, one of the like starring roles in Rebus Blue. But how did the Sarge voice like really come to be? Uh, well, you know, we have uh, American football. It's quite a bit different. I know then. Then footy, is that, is that the correct yeah. thing to call it? I don't want to sound like a dumb American, <laughs> too late. Uh, but you know, American football, so I, when I was in high school, I had uh, these football coaches who sounded quite like Sarge, and would say ridiculous things like that, and um, always thought they would be fun characters, and so when we started doing Red vs. Blue, that was basically what I channeled, was my high school football.